So John Jones, thank you so much for the time. Just a few hours before maybe the biggest fight of your career. And I want to start with something you said on the Embedded series that they've been putting out. You said, this is our Ali Frazier. You said that, right? Yeah, I did say that. UFC 165, before that fight against Gustafsson, I asked you who the Frazier to your Ali would be. You said it was going to be, or it was, Rashad Evans. I suggested back then that it would be Daniel Cormier. And you wouldn't even say his name at the time, if you recall. You wouldn't even want to go there. Why have you changed your stance? Um, well, it seems like, uh, from a publicity standpoint, uh, this is the Ali Frazier. I've never had more people interested in a fight uh, in my entire career. Um, it's just the most random people, old ladies, and just, you know, almost everybody I run into. Um, uh, I feel like this, this fight has definitely elevated me and Daniel's uh, exposure level. And so, um, as far as just uh, publicity was, um, this is the Ali Frazier, supposedly. You don't yeah. feel that way deep down? Like, you don't feel the tension there? The, the world is watching? The world is definitely watching. Um, but I don't feel too much, too much tension. I've been in uh, these situations so many times before, and I don't think people are really grasping that. You know, I think to the fans and to media and to everybody else, you know, this is just so crazy. Mm. The only thing that's been crazy about this fight to me is what happened at the uh, press conference and the amount of exposure this fight's getting got. I thought, you know, it's a little wild. But to me and my camp, this is what we do, man. This is what we do. Uh, do I have nerves? I have nerves going into this fight. Uh, but I have nerves going into every fight. Okay. Um, but, you know, you got to really try to put yourself in my mind for a minute and think about what I've been against. You know, this is not the first guy that, that's supposed to be a monster. And every time I go out there and I do my job. And so just through proving myself over and over again, my confidence and my self-belief is on an all-time high. You gotta remember, Glover Teixeira hadn't lost 20 fights. He had knockout power, he had a nice takedown, and he had great jiu-jitsu, right? Stylistically, everyone thought that guy was gonna get me. Everyone except for me. Leona Machida was the unsolvable puzzle. Um, you know, Ryan Bader, at the time, when mm -hmm. I was younger and, and had, I'm proven, he was supposed to be the, he was supposed to be the perfect storm for me. And every time I, I've been able to uh, come out with the win. So right now, um, I've embraced achieving and doing the undone. I realize that it's not going to be easy, uh, but I embrace that I am going to do it and I can do it. I can't climb the mountain. I've done it over and over again. So this is my comfort zone. The promotion for the fight is very interesting. I know you've been asked about this, that promo, and you said you kind of, you know, you let it go. At first you were a little bit upset, but you know the UFC has to do what they have to do. But can you tell me about your reaction? Because when I saw that for the first time, the first thing I thought about was, what does John Jones think of this? I've never seen a promo paint a champion and the pound for pound grade and everything you've done. I've never seen one put out this picture that isn't, you know, as equal on both sides, if you know what I'm saying. And, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know your immediate reaction to seeing that. The first time you saw it, I, I guess you saw it on the pay-per-view. Yeah. What was going through your mind? Yeah, originally when I saw it, I was offended. I thought, wow, the UFC definitely just, uh, just lined that up uh, to, to make me look pretty bad. I didn't feel as if it was even at all. You know, they, they showed... Uh, I mean, the editors can, can paint any type of picture. Um, you know, they, they, they showed, uh, you know, two minutes earlier. And they show, you know, they basically tried to sell this whole story of me being fake. Um, and uh, I thought, wow, you know, I was, I, was, I was offended. But before I talked to anyone about it, call anyone, I, I literally, Two minutes after I watched that, I thought to myself, this is great TV, <laughs> and I said it. And ultimately, I put myself out there to have that used against me. So um, I didn't make us think about it. I was just like, hey, man, that didn't look too good, especially the way the editors line, you know, lined that up. Um, 
Would they have done that to everyone? I don't or was know. it just you? I don't know. I wouldn't say it's just me. I don't think they're out to get me. But, you know, before UFC 151, I used to feel as if the UFC, we were all a family. And when that card got canceled, and when Dana and uh, Lorenzo or whatnot, or I would say mainly, well, both of them, who knows, when the UFC um, really, I would say, turned on me. And, I, you know, I just think there's so many ways that could have went. Yeah, you know, they could have apologized for the thing being uh, canceled, but instead they took all the fans and almost ruined my image overnight. Um, it just showed me that we weren't all a big family, that I was a separate entity. And um, it was a big eye-opener for me. I, I, I've looked at the UFC and my relationship with the UFC completely different since that situation. You think that still lingers? Like if that never happened, that promo doesn't happen, if 151 didn't happen, this promo doesn't happen, you think it's still a part of, of, of who you are and your relationship with them? No, 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 no. What I'm, why, the reason why I'm bringing up UFC 151 is because I'm not surprised that the UFC would put out something that wasn't best for me. Understood. You know, uh, me saying I would literally kill you. I I didn't ever intend it for kids to be able to see that, and for people who uh, respect me a ton to be able to see that. You know, outside of my work, you know, I am just who I am. And when it comes to me being at work, the way you have a suit on right now, um, I also try to carry myself in a certain way. And to know that that was not released by anybody else but the UFC. It was just like, man, like you guys totally just put me out there to sell an extra ticket, not worrying about my personal image or the way I try to represent myself. Um, so I just looked at it as, you know, just like UFC 151, uh, they'll bear me if they have to to make themselves look good. Does that bother you? It doesn't bother me. I just understand it. Maybe the old John would have been bothered by it? The younger John? The younger John would have been very confused by it. Mm. But now that I have experience, I... Uh, you know, I just kind of let it be what it is. So by then, by the time you saw the promo, maybe you were over it, but when you saw that footage leak, did a, did a part of your stomach kind of drop? Like, wow, this, is, this wasn't supposed to be out there, you know? Um, my, I, I, what, do you, what do you mean? You what, know that what, footage of you guys going back and forth. Right, when it leaked originally? Or, yeah, or yeah, like back in promo. August, like three days later. Oh, yeah, I, um, yeah, I was thinking, man, this doesn't look good. This doesn't look good at all. But at the same time, I was also like, all right, well, that, that's, that's like, that's a part of who I am. Not that I would kill anyone, but I'm, I just got in a fist fight with a guy five minutes earlier. I was very emotional still, very upset. And I said that I, you know, I would kill him if he spit in my face. That was the most extreme thing I could think to say at the time. And that was a pretty extreme thing that I heard. Um, so, so yeah, I definitely, definitely didn't want that to get out because of, you know, the type of example and role model I would like to be. Um, but it did, and I, I came to terms with it within five minutes, and was just like, Ugh. why do you think people are so obsessed with talking about? You being the bad guy, you being the good guy, are you fake? Like, we don't talk about other fighters this way, right. and it comes up all the time. It just came up at the, at the scrum. Like, why yeah. are people so obsessed with the real John Jones and your image and what you say? They scrutinize. Why do you think that is? You know, um, I think because uh, I think it's because no one really knows me. No one really knows me, and you can't really criticize or, scru or scrutinize my my technique. Because I, I do do things right inside the octagon, mm. so I th I think it just gives people something to talk about. I think it's uh, just uh, it's something for the trolls, it's something for the fans to engage in, it's something for uh, the com MMA community to have something to blog about and stuff like that. Not to say that I, you know, that I'm the center of everything, but mm -hmm. for the people who like to talk about me, it's just I look at it as um, it's just something to have people talking. Well, you can't say that I gas out in my fights. You can't mm -hmm. say that I do steroids or, I, or, or there's nothing to talk about when it comes to me as a fighter. You know, I do, I do things right. So to, to pick apart my, my personality, it's like the only thing they got. And so I allow them to, ha to have that because I actually find it really intriguing that, that, uh, that people are so blind and they can't just see that, that I'm just a person. Mm. 
You know, I, I'm a professional athlete and we try to carry myself like a professional athlete. As the result of that, I've had, I have all Fortune 500 endorsements. Um, but outside of that, when I'm with my friends and my family, uh, you get to see glimpses of me outside of, outside of being that pro athlete. And glimpses of me, you don't know. You, you don't know me. No one knows me. You don't know me, Ariel. Mm -hmm. we've, we've done an interview so many times. Very few people actually know me. So who, who, who are you? Who's the real John Jones? Me, I or Will am, we ever know him? I am a, I don't think you guys will. Unless you don't you, want us to. Um, you know, it's not that I don't want you to. I, I do want you guys to. That's why I Instagram so much. Hmm. And I tweet so much. <laughs> yes. Um, um, I'm an unperfect Christian. Hmm. I'm, I'm just like you. I do things I'm not proud of. I do a lot of things that I am proud of. I, um, I'm just me, man. And, and I think people, instead of calling me fake, they need, they need to just realize that they don't know me. They don't know me. And, you know, and if you want to le learn me, pay attention closely and understand the many sides of my personality and who I am. I love this relationship that you have with this cat of yours, Ali, who's Ali. somewhere here. Yeah, he's around here somewhere. It's, 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 it's unbelievable to me because you might come across as, you know, athletes, you're, you're in your prime, you may come across as sometimes you know, self-centered, you know, you, the world revolves around you. But then we see you with this cat, caring for it, walking it, you know, walking around the airport with it. It's fascinating to me That's because funny. you become like a little, you know, you become like a father with his child. Mm -hmm. You don't become John Jones anymore. That's the way I view it. What's this obsession with cats? It's almost like Tyson had his pigeons, you seem to have your cats. <laughs> yeah. What's this obsession? I have dogs too now. And so what's, what's, what's the deal with the cats, just, though? Because these aren't your typical cats, right? No, I have two uh, African servals. Um, I just love the cat. They're just really cool. You know, I, um, they're so graceful. Uh, they're magnificent hunters. Um, they're just cool animals. They, they look different. You know, I grew up with dogs, and, and cats are just completely different beings altogether. So it's a learning process for me to understand cats and learn how to treat them and learn how to train them and things like that. I don't know. I just like cats. I like cats and dogs. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lover, man. Deep down, I'm a lover. Yes. I love life. <laughs> you know, I love uh, positive things. I love feeling good. And uh, animals, they, they, they bring joy to me. Pretty much all, you know, members of the MMA media think you're the number one fighter in the world, pound for pound. Most fans, I think, would agree. Just a few weeks ago, Dana White said he thought Anthony Pettis was number yeah. one. Did you hear that, and what did you make of that? I heard about that, okay. and it really doesn't matter what Dana thinks about who's number one. You know, he is my boss. Um, he's not my trainer. You know what I mean? It's, he, has, he has a job to do. He has to promote um, fights and stuff like that. So um, if he feels as, as that Anthony's number one, you know, um, that's his opinion. Other people look at me as number one. Other people are still looking at Anderson as number one. He's just one person and his opinion really doesn't matter when it comes to who's number one or not. Could you be more famous though? Could you be more successful if they pushed you more like maybe some of the other fighters on the roster? Do you think you haven't reached your potential um, for some of those reasons? No, I'm not going to blame it on Dana. No, know? I'm not saying Dana, but just the, 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 the organization, you know. The, pushing the, me a little harder. Yeah. Do you think that more it, it, w it could help it could help if they push me a little harder but they they're very busy and I can't I can't sit here and want them to take control of my destiny if I want to be more famous or if I want to be a bigger star I, there's there's things I can be doing like what it's just a lot more things do you think you haven't reached that potential like you, you will, I haven't you have haven't. not you know but m now more than ever I'm ready to uh, mature and grow up and really start um, you really start using my potential, doing more to give back. You know, this community service has been a real blessing to me mm. because I really got to become comfortable with speaking to kids and and giving back. You know, I I actually finished my hours, and I was like, let's just do some more stuff. You know, I mean, I got time. You know, so I'm really glad I got to open that door. So giving back in some ways, you know, getting into. Um, you know, maybe acting, foundations, um, just, you know, I, I'm really, I'm really st starting to become a complete person in my personal life, personal life. Mm -hmm. finances are together and my family is doing good and kids are in school, they're, they're very smart 
everything is so well put together right now that I'm ready to, um, I feel like I've completed a certain level and I'm ready to elevate myself to a higher level. So um, as far as being more famous or whatnot, or being a bigger mm -hmm. star, um, I think that will come with my maturity and me actually seizing opportunities and creating more opportunities for myself. And speaking of family, you recently moved full time to Albuquerque, right? Yes. Which is, you know, it has been sort of a quiet knock on you. Like you would just show up to camp. You wouldn't just live and breathe being a fighter in Albuquerque. Right. And you'd start with the belly, which you were kind of proud of. You'd show it and it'd be yeah. amazing to watch your... It's been cool. ...your evolution. Why have you left New York, which it always seemed like you were very proud to be from and to be currently living in? Right. Um, well, the main reason why I left New York was uh, my six-year-old, Leah, um, legally, she has to be put in school. Yeah. And um, me and my fiance talked about me going to Albuquerque for training camp and leaving them in New York and coming back to New York. And I thought about it. And, you know, my family really is uh, the center of my happiness, um, being able to come home to my daughters and you know, be with my fiance every day. It really is what makes me who I am outside of, you know, John Bones, Jones. Um, so leaving them, it just, it wouldn't be good for us. Mm. It wouldn't be good for me. Um, so I said, you know, let's just all move down to Albuquerque together. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. And I think it's just so time. It's just time to do it. You know, I'm not getting younger. Um, and I've been fortunate to always evolve, even though I don't train in between fights. And I actually live a completely different life right. than who you guys may think I am. Will that change, though? Will you be around the that gym more? Change. change. So the, the pop belly is gone, probably. Exactly. And I'm just so excited for my evolution as a person, you know, um, to get to hang out with my strength and conditioning coach in between fights and, you know, go to jiu-jitsu classes and, and, you know, work towards a black belt finally. And, um, you know, just live a more healthy, productive lifestyle. Um, so I'm really excited for this. And uh, I think it's going to really show and really shine after this win hmm. and uh, for my next fight. Do you ever have any nightmares about the fight, this fight in particular? Because no. No, I don't think about losing. Never. And I don't have nightmares. Okay. <laughs> um, There's never a time where the worst pot, like the, sometimes, you know, people, you, the worst just pops into your mind unexpectedly. That never happens. I don't think about losing at all. Okay. I don't. I mean, I, 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 I'm real with myself and, you know, you think to yourself, if you were to possibly lose, what does that mean to your legacy? And Muhammad Ali lost, you know, um, and he's still the greatest. You know, he came back and beat everybody who ever beat him. Um, so I don't believe that one fight defies, uh, defines who I am as a champion. I, I believe I'll be a champion for the rest of my life um, because of what I've done. Um, but with that also being said, I, I just don't plan on losing. I have a, a stronger conviction, conviction that I was, um, I won't say I was meant to, but I just have a conviction that I'm totally capable of being um, a magnificent champion. Mm. A champion that, that stood with the biggest names of being a champion. You know, I know I'm not my Ali, you know, I didn't stand up against not going to war or right. anything like that. You know, he was just such an iconic figure. Um, there'll never be another Bruce Lee. Uh, but I do believe I could be mentioned amongst greats, mm. just for me being myself or exactly who I am. Uh, and, and I really want that for myself. Um, you know, I don't think people nowadays, uh, not speaking of everyone, because I'm sure there's a lot of dreamers out there, but I just... I think I dream on a different level than a lot of other maybe fighters right now, and I'm not really apologetic for it. I, I really, I really want it, and it's not going to be easy, um, but I know that I'm capable. When's the last time you thought about the the janitor days? You know, because look at you now. I mean, yeah. those were a lot, then none of this could have happened if you know certain things. You know, like mm -hmm. that film Sliding Doors. You go one way, you go the other way. You do mm -hmm. one thing here. You could have been that guy. You that could have been your life. Do you think about that guy a lot? Ah, uh, no, I never do. No, no. It, it, Actually, it, I, I, was, I was a janitor my second semester at uh, Iowa Central. Uh, does that feel like a different lifetime? Help, help me prepare for school. Uh, no, man. I, I, I'm very aware of where I came from, where I've come from. You know, I worked at Annie Ann's Pretzels. Wow. Hollister. Uh, I was a paper boy. 
Uh, I, was, I was a dishwasher for several months. Um, and yeah, I uh, still remember all that. That's why I try to pe treat people kindly uh, because I, I'm one of them. But you did, did you, like, were there moments where you were envisioning this, you know, champion of the, the world? The day I decided to be a, 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 a MMA fighter, I, I knew I wanted to be a UFC champion. And once I won my first fight and actually got to taste what it felt like to fight, I, I knew that I could do it. I knew that I could do it. I would just have to apply myself in a way I never had before. And uh, now I'm here. This all started, at least in Daniel's mind, at that event in Anaheim when you said, I bet I could take you down, right? Mm -hmm. Will it end on that note in the sense that will you try to actually stay true to your word and out-wrestle the guy because that meant so much to him? Uh, I, when I get into the fight, ego and pride won't be a, Okay. Uh, it won't have anything to do with it. Um, pride will, I mean, like, as far as if I get put in the best position, position to get out of it, like you saw when I got armbarred, that was my pride that got me out of that armbar. I, I just couldn't imagine tapping. Um, but for the most part, it'll be about tactics. It'll be about reading him as the fight goes and, and processing what he's giving me and uh, use my ability to execute. Would you say this is the biggest fight in your career since the Rashad fight? Because I feel like, you know, Vitor and, and, and Gustafson and, and, and Glover, you know, no disrespect to those fights in between, but I think a lot of people going in felt like there was no way you were gonna lose the, 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 that fight and there wasn't a rivalry there. No way I was gonna lose one fight. Those fights between Rashad and this one. Like the last time people thought that there was a chance you might lose going in uh -huh. was Rashad because of the fact that he knew you and whatnot. Right. And the last time it felt like a mega deal that you were fighting. You know, you, you had, the Vitor fight came together pretty quickly. Right. You know, I think a lot of people forget that going into the Gustafson I, I think fight. A, I think a lot of people are, I think you're looking past the Glover fight. You think so? Yeah, man. It didn't have the, the verbal. Well, that heightens things, it does, right? Yeah, but when it comes to as a martial artist, um, a, a lot of people thought Glover had it. Yeah. 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 Think about his skill set. You know, knockout power, mm -hmm. aggressive, coming right at you, getting in his chest, as people always say they, they want to do to me. Mm -hmm. um, a solid takedown, physical strength, confidence, 20 fight win streak, black belt in jiu-jitsu, a winner. You know, a lot of people um, thought he would be the one. So is that one more dangerous than this one, in your opinion, going into it? Mm, it's hard to say. You know, Daniel's made a lot of people look. Um, he's, he's looked really good. Uh, but he's only 4-0 in the UFC. Mm. I'm 15-0 in the UFC. Um, you know, it's just, you, I can't say. I've, I've, it, you know, if you look back in some of my interviews, I always say, it's like, is this going to be your toughest test? And I always say, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Because that's honestly the way I feel. Mm. You know, with, with Gustafson, I had no clue he was going to give me that type of run for my money. I thought I was going to kill him. Mm. Um, so it's like, maybe he will, or maybe he won't. Maybe I may go out there and pop DC with something that just really hurts him. And the whole fight's changed. Or maybe he may go out there, impose his will at first. And I have to really dig deep like I did against Gustafson to find a way to win. You know, who knows how it's going to go. But I do believe I'll win. Final thing, I know you like to, you do a lot of meditation and envisioning and whatnot. Have you envisioned the way this fight will play out? Do you already have it set in your mind? I do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a taste? I can't. I can't, Ariel. I've given you enough today. All right. Is it unique, <laughs> though? Is it something special? Uh, I've trained a lot of tactics that I think... Uh, should just fit his psychology. Um, and uh, depending on, you know, I really don't want to get into that too much. All right, fair enough. You have to buy the pay-per-view to find out. You have to buy the pay-per-view <laughs> to find out. UFC 182, me and Aria Hawani. I hope you've enjoyed. Check us out, pay-per-view. Honor. Thank you so much and best of luck to you. Thank you, Ariel. Always a pleasure.